my name is Mike Gabin and welcome to my KSP campaign. I'm here in the tracking station just looking to deorbit uh, some debris that's been left over from my last couple of launches. You might recall that what I do is I leave, when I uh, stage these things, I leave them in an orbit with a periapsis in around 50 kilometers and they'll stay in orbit as long as they're not the active vehicle. But then as soon as I make them the active vehicle, well, down they come. Ooh. That was just uh, one of those little smart parts. Just exploded there, nothing of any real consequence. And I thought while we watch this thing come down, we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up this episode. What we're gonna see is a couple of launches all in support of my next mission for the Korion. Uh, including what we're gonna be launching is our new uh, low carbon orbit crewed vehicle, the Kuryus. So we'll be seeing that a little bit later in this particular episode. It'll be nice because the Kuryus is going to be my first vessel that's capable of taking up three Kerbinauts into orbit at the same time. So uh, that'll allow me to just launch complete crews at one time. And, oh, what? Oh. Well, what just happened there? You see, this is the first time I've deorbited 2.5 meter lifters. And... Uh, there was just a little bit too much force on those first set of parachutes when they deployed. Now you can see these second ones are working. However, this thing's not quite coming down with the attitude that I would uh, normally like. Yeah, 2.5 meter lifter means more mass, means it's carrying more energy as it's moving through the atmosphere, and it was just a little bit too much for those first sets of chutes to handle. I'm going to have to start uh, getting into full, uh, proper drogue shoots, I think. I'll have to start experimenting with that. But meanwhile, we are getting close to the bottom and our speed's nice and low. Maybe this will work out after all. Just about. And... <laughs> then again, maybe not. It was then, well, several days time warping to get ready for my next mission. Yeah, maybe uh, putting all those points into the space plane hangar last time wasn't such a good idea. What we have here, I didn't really have a good name for it, so I just called it Science Package. It's actually a bit of an afterthought that I'll explain. Well, I'll explain it right now. Um, a little bit embarrassing, but uh, this was supposed to go up with a different mission. All it is actually is science equipment, various science equipment that I'm going to attach to the Kuryus, and uh, the mission for the Kuryus is going to be to just exit Kerbin's sphere of influence. We're going to collect some science. We're going to get a lot of experience doing that for my Kerbals, and then we're going to come back. Um, the reason why it has to go up in a separate mission is, well, I have this uh, very large fuel bar. There's actually another module for the space station because um, I got tired of having to send up a separate fuel barge every time I wanted to refuel the Korion. So this thing's got a ton of fuel on it. Um, it also has one of those KIS st large storage containers that I filled full of all kinds of parts. And I, had, and I was just going to put all the science parts in that and then just attach it all to the Korion using Kerbal inventory system and Kerbal attachment system and uh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to put all the science. I put all kinds of stuff into the inventory uh, container uh, except I forgot to put all the science. So this had to go up in a separate launch but because this is such a simple launch despite it being lo much lower in the building queue in the vehicle assembly building it got completed uh, well ahead of the fuel module you actually won't be seeing the fuel module until the next episode uh oh shoot man this is turning into an epidemic anyway in case you didn't figure that out i hit z instead of x again i did that last episode where i was doing my moho escape burn i've done it again here i thought about re uh mapping the keys but i worry that that's just going to cause me more problems i just need to be more careful and pay more attention anyway i'm turning myself retrograde to bring my periapsis down because i don't want to detach the lifter and leave it in orbit i want it to be able to deorbit. thankfully i do have the fuel for all this so that's not going to be an issue it's just a pain and <laughs> going around to prograde 
and then we'll just detach and then we'll take take a look at our uh, a little orbiter here a little transfer vehicle anyway the front the top part here let's get in here and take a look yeah the top part here is really just science part the science parts and a couple of docking ports and that's about it there's there's not much else to it um I wanted to build the transfer vehicle to take it out there as simple as I possibly could. So it is actually just a monoprop. That's all it is. It's got the small little monoprop can, the, the 0.625 meter monoprop can. That's all the fuel. I put on one battery. And as you'll see very, very shortly, that turned out to be a mistake. I should have put a little bit more thought into that. It's taking a little bit of a closer look. You see how simple it is. And then I just got some uh, RCS blocks around it. So in order to thrust forward, I just have to press H. And here, unfortunately, you have no control over the power of your thrust. So it's, it's actually, uh, you have to do it in sort of these little puffs. So I'm just circularizing here, obviously. The, the one thing I ended up forgetting on this thing, uh, solar panels. I thought that little battery should be enough uh, to get, all I got to do is get to the space station. Um, so it's just got to have enough electrical power to basically survive about an orbit. Uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it's just dopiness on my part. So I performed the burn to set it on an intercept course with the space station. I'm really annoyed by this because actually I was proud of this cheap little lifter. Uh, I placed all the RCS blocks so that they were right in around the center of mass so that it actually can translate up, down, right, left very very effectively so it would have been great to use it for docking but uh, unfortunately that's not going to be because by the time we get back to the station this thing will be long dead so uh, here I'm ha I am I thought well I'm gonna have to free up a docking port if the Korean's going to be able to dock with it so uh, I'm just waiting for the electricity to get nice and low and then I'm gonna make the last act of this thing while I still have a signal uh, and still have electrical power to decouple the docking node there we go and sorry about not being able to see too much I've obviously turned off the lights because I'm trying to conserve electricity but these two things are separated now here let's uh let's give this a little bit of a nudge there we go now they're separating so that the crying can get in here and pick up each of these separately and aboard for our crew we have the flagellant duo of Bill and Bartner. Yeah, two engineers, unfortunately, no pilot. Now, theoretically, this shouldn't make any difference because uh, the Karine is equipped with a probe core, so it is SAS compatible regardless of who the crew. I could have no crew in it. I could still, I could still fly it around okay. Um, but uh, yeah, two engineers, the two engineers are, well, it's just a result of the way the, the crew rotations are working, right? Because I have an ascent vehicle that I'm only Gary two, and I like to have crews of three. And so you get some sort of funny rotations going around, and after the last rotation, well, this is what I was left with. So I'm hoping that the Kuryus will kind of start to rectify this particular situation. I suppose out of the two of them, it would have to be Bill, who's the uh, commander, I think, in this particular mission. I think so. Yeah, Bill's commander. Um, Bill, by the way, yeah, Bill has a respectable amount of experience. He's orbited the moon. He's flown by Minmus. And in fact, I started keeping track of their time in space. And Bill right now has the, the record. He This is his 69th day in space. Uh, the last 31 of which have been consecutive. He's in day 31 of his current mission right now. So Bill definitely has the uh, time in space record. Next on the list is Glafia, by the way, who will be coming up a little later in this particular episode. 48 days in space for Glafia, except for her, almost all of those are consecutive. All of those were all in a row. So uh, Glafia definitely, as far as in a row goes, holds the record. And like I said, she's coming up a little bit later in this episode. And while we're speaking about days in space, actually today also marks the 105th consecutive day of me having Kerbals in space uh, in this particular game. I've had uh, Kerbals in space since the uh, first crewing of the Korion. Uh, oh, I don't know what episode that was, but it was quite a lot of episodes ago. It was 105 game days ago, and since then I've always had at least 
one Kerbal in space at any particular time. Anyway, uh, remember that the uh, science package is already coming to within, well, according to this, half a kilometer of uh, Kerbin Station, or of the Kuryus now. Kur stop. Uh, what, what? I'm getting my Kurs all mixed up. The Kurayan, there we go. <laughs> Maybe I should start coming up with more original names. Anyway, and so the plan's simply going to be to... Uh, to match velocities with it as it comes within uh, within close range. So let's see here. We are uh, just a few minutes away. So of course, uh, you know that just means pointing yourself retrograde relative to the target and starting to slow yourself down, just like you're going to be doing a rendezvous. Let's see here. We'll point ourselves. Where is that? Where is the uh, science package? It should be down there somewhere. Okay, we'll rotate to the retrograde icon, and that should tell us which way to point to where the package is. Oh, and by this point, I had realized I made a pretty dumb mistake in separating those two. Um, there, there was a second docking port on the science package. It has a docking port on each end, so there was no reason to separate them. There was a free docking port. And by the way, I don't have to rendezvous. I figured out pretty quickly that I don't have to rendezvous with the science package. I have to rendezvous with the science package debris, which is the actual science parts. The science package is the uh, little transfer vehicle. So I'm going to launch the dock first with the science package debris because it has two docking ports. And then I can use that extra docking port to pick up the science package. And in the shot you see here, uh, the science package debris, what I'm aiming for, which are the science parts, are the yellow icon. The purple icon going by is the science package, which is actually the transfer vehicle. And the sort of teal icon you say way off in the distance, a little over 10 kilometers away, that is the space station that eventually we got to get ourselves back to. But anyway, Bill proved himself a veteran, even though he'd never docked anything before, he proved himself quite capable at this point. Yeah, who needs Jeb? Who needs Val? We got Bill and Bartner here to do the job. Whoa, there it goes. Oh, ooh, little wobbly. <laughs> the size package is so light. There we go. And then I went over and picked up the uh, transfer vehicle. And the whole idea, actually, with the transfer vehicle, I didn't have to go get it. But uh, I don't want it out here polluting my sky. I want to deorbit the thing. So we're just going to dock with it here, which also went without any issues. And then we're going to transfer over a little bit of the electricity that the Karine has and can generate because it does have solar panels. And, uh, and then I'll just deorbit this thing. So now comes the second half of this, which is to get the science package as well as Bill and Bartner, of course, back to Kerbin Station. Unfortunately, with all of what we've been doing, Kerbin Station is now more than 80 kilometers away. And even worse, it's in an orbit that is completely different from ours. We're now in the transfer orbit that the uh, science package was in, with a periapsis at 80 kilometers and its apoapsis out at the altitude of Kerbin Station, which is 120 kilometers. One option would be to just kind of wait it out, um, because we're eventually going to come pretty close to meeting up with Kerbin Station again after a whole lot of orbits and I decided pretty quickly that was not going to do. That was going to just take way too long. Um, unfortunately, I think uh, I think it was Valentina probably on Capcom because when Bill called down to sort of get some advice on to what to do with this situation, uh, all he got was silence. I think Val probably heard that little comment about what do we need pilots for? So uh, Bill and Bill and Bartner, they're going to be on their own. And so the first thing we thought, well, why don't we uh, time warp to periapsis and then we'll just bring our apoapsis down. Uh, that will lower our orbit, get us going around faster, and we will catch back up to Kerbin Station more quickly. Uh, unfortunately, I just realized that, oh, I am already past periapsis. Okay, so... What we're going to have to do, we'll just have to burn, in, so we're going to burn retrograde and just bring down our orbit. Again, the idea here is just to lower our period, get ourselves going faster, we'll catch back up to the station. I do want to keep an eye on periapsis. 
because I can't let it drift down into the atmosphere. So I want to keep, okay, that's making it go down. Oh, geez. Okay, I'm going to need to add in. Uh, do I want to burn radially downwards? A bit radially in or a little bit radially out? No, no, I think, I think, I. oh, my, my head hurts. I can't think of this right now. And all the while, I'm still drifting further and further away from periapsis. Let's try re splitting the difference between retrograde and radially outwards. And we'll burn. And that is, uh, no, that's really lowering my periapsis. Forget it, forget it. I can't think, uh, my head hurts. Let's just burn retrograde. That's what we're going to do. Burn retrograde. Keep an eye on periapsis while we burn retrograde. Run, get, there it is. Okay, 77, 76, 75 kilometers. Again, I don't want it to get it below 70. 74 kilometers, 73, 72, 71. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Oh, my apoapsis is still fairly high. What do I got to do? It's radially... No, it's radially in. Yes, if I burn radially in, that will pull my apoapsis towards me, which is what will lower it. So let's just, yeah, that's what I should have been doing. I should have been splitting the difference between retrograde and radially in or radially down. All right, let's just burn this way. That's, uh, yeah, that's bringing my apoapsis down. It's raising my periapsis. That'll do. That's close enough. It was then just a simple matter to set up the rendezvous burn with the station, which still, it's going to take me a while to catch up to it, it's still going to be almost six hours away to that burn. But, you know, performing the burn, that wasn't an issue. And so a little, about a day later, Bartner and Bill were closing in on the station. Ah, we're nowhere near lined up. What the heck? Okay, we got back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh my gosh, how the heck did that happen? Oh, I must not have the docking port selected as my control from here point. I must be controlling from the capsule. Yeah, that has to be it. So I was lining it up based on the capsule. Control from here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're on the wrong side of the docking port. Okay, well, let's see. We'll straighten ourselves up here. And back up a little bit. That should help. There we are, according to the docking alignment indicator, we are now green. We'll let ourselves get a couple of meters above the docking port there. We'll start slowing ourselves down, bringing that central axis velocity closer to zero. And we'll also start pushing ourselves so we'll drift over the docking port. There we go. Central axis velocity is very close to zero. We are now drifting in the right direction according to docking alignment indicator. Now this is the next day and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to make some suppositions on what I think is happening in Capcom right now. The way I envision what's going on in Capcom right now is, is, is it's still Val on Capcom but she has invited Jeb over and they are secretly watching this and waiting to see how long is it going to take until I realize that I have the wrong docking port selected. <laughs> the docking port I have selected is a 1.25 meter docking port and the docking port at the end of that science package is a 0.625 meter Clampatron Jr. And although I have myself completely lined up almost perfectly now, there's no way these guys are going to go together. Thankfully, this doesn't break anything. <laughs> Going. Oh, I've turned off the torque. You can see how confident I am that I got this all lined out. Oh no, back up, back up, back up. This isn't gonna work. What a dope. I need the upper berth. It's nice how you can name the docking ports and cycle through them with the docking alignment indicator. Now I have the right one selected. And of course I have to turn the torque back on so that I can get my attitude correctly. But that was the last of the hijinks. And I swear I wasn't doing this uh, on purpose, this sort of dumb flying here. Uh, yeah, but I think psychologically, maybe I do need a pilot after all.
And speaking of pilots, here we have Jebediah along with Glafia and our scientist Chrissy. And they're going to be the crew for our next mission for the Korion to take it out just past a Kerbin's sphere of influence and be the first Kerbals to orbit the sun. So they are on their way to Kerbin Station in our brand new Kuryu's vehicle. We'll be taking a look at this vehicle in a little bit of detail in just a moment. But first, Jebediah needs to learn that uh, Karma is a bitch. <laughs> As he obliviously burned past the periapsis of 50 kilometers before uh, ditching his ascent stage. Forcing me once again to burn a bit retrograde so that the discarded stage will re-enter into the atmosphere and remove that debris. But with that now accomplished, why don't we take a bit of a closer look at our new vehicle. Okay, so uh, let's raise up the solar panels. This thing is almost entirely composed of homegrown rocket parts. And it's really cool, I think that you get the parts here to make this sort of KSP version of the, of the uh, I was going to say Kuryu's, but the Soyuz, of course, is the, is the vessel that this is modeled after, and very much the same thing. We have a descent module there in the middle. That's where our Kerbals all are. There's an orbital module ahead of it that right now has nobody in it. I think, in fact, it is all homegrown rocket parts except for the lights and this one communitron right here. So all told this thing can hold up to five Kerbals really, though normally you would only have three. You certainly can only descend three at a time. The engine is actually integrated right into the service module in the back. That service module is just a single part. It's pretty neat. It has the engine, but it also has all your, your LFO, your monoprop, your electricity. It's all contained in one part like that. Pretty handy little thing. Oh, we got some messages here. Okay, uh, stage destroyed. Oh, that's just the escape tower. Yeah, that's, that's no big deal. And oh yeah, I should have mentioned I do, I do have a space station contract and this qualifies, so the contract is complete to build a space station because it does hold five Kerbals and can generate power. And Okay, stage recovered. That's one of the uh, LFO boosters. But I only have 16% recovered, and that's because the speed, it says 16.4% recovered only because of speed, it was falling too quickly. And some bunch of scrapped parts obviously took damage from that liquid fuel booster. There's, a, there's another liquid fuel booster recovered, again 16%, and it says that the terminal velocity is 11.5 meters per second. Barely less than 12 meters per second. Yeah, I'm going to have to uh, beef up the parachutes on those, I think. Okay, well, let's get these guys over to Kerbin Station, which, of course, is an entirely routine exercise. Well, at least routine most episodes. A tank of carbon dioxide is leaking. Okay, well, that's dang it, of course. Though leaking carbon dioxide is hardly a big issue. So I don't think I need to get out there and fix it. But you know, our velocity, our relative velocity with the station is pretty low. And I, I think it's only this module here that has life support. Yeah, I think all the life support is in that module. So Glafia should be able to just go out there, fix it right away. She doesn't have to go anywhere. So why don't we go and do that? So let's EVA out Glafia. Okay, and we need to take a spare part. And then we should be just right clicking and it should be, I think, apply duct tape. For, no? Okay, let's check the orbital module. Oh, she's a little too far away. Okay, well, let's crawl up there. Okay, click on that. No, no apply duct tape. Okay, oops, she's falling off the ladder. Okay. Still, one of these, one of these, there's got to be a carbon dioxide tank leaking somewhere. Okay, let's do inspection look up here okay uh, it says this parts as good as new that's of course the initial warning okay let's get over to the descent module check that out again I don't see an applied duct tape so let's inspect ok 
Okay, uh, reaction wheel, she doesn't have enough level tank, but no, everything seems fine there. I don't think there's life support in the service module, but we're running out of parts to check. Let's see. No, I don't see apply duct tape inspect. Uh, coolant line, engine, gimbal, tank, no. At least what she could, could repair. Oh, we got a pause here. Must be auto saving. Yep, there we go. Okay, well, I don't know what it is in. And oh, jeez. Oh no, there's the station coming up there on the left. We're close. Okay, Glafia, get inside. Get inside, Jeb. Apply the brakes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're 20 meters away from the station. Ah, jeez, Louise. And now I can see the life support tank on the station is glowing red. So it's on the station that we have the problem. Man, nothing is easy this episode. Anyway, the rest of the docking went without any incident at all. And although we are closing in on the end of this particular episode, I do have one more thing to show you because glafia has got a new toy, a new KIS toy. Specifically, she's got this uh, electric screwdriver. Here, we'll, we'll zoom in here a little bit and get a bit of a better look at it. And this is supposed to allow you to take off bigger parts, and I've always hated this big engine on the end here, so I want to see if we can remove it. So, oh, it's saying it's too heavy. 1.75 is greater than 1. I assume that's telling me I need 3 quarters of a Kerbal to help. Well, rather than cutting off a leg, why don't we send out a whole Kerbal? Specifically, we'll send out an entire Jebediah out to help. Uh, yeah, I do have a station full of engineers. In fact, I have every single one of my engineers aboard this station right now. But I wanted to show that the uh, helper Kerbal here does not need to be another engineer. So we'll send out Jebediah. And all we need to do is get him down in the vicinity here. You can see i got Glafia hanging on to, I've attached a little bit of a ladder part there. So that my Kerbals, once I have more than one Kerbal, I want them hanging onto something because I don't want them to be floating away. And then we'll just see if we can take this off now. So grab. And it is way too big to fit in her inventory, which I suppose is completely understandable. So although she can grab it, she cannot store it. So we're just going to, can we let it go? Can I drop it here? It looks like I should be able to just click and drop it, but that does not it's not working. And I'm trying all kinds of other buttons, and it's not working. What ended up working for me was to actually attach the piece, or attempt to attach the piece to itself. And then once I tried to do that, it was free. Now, the fuel module that I talked about earlier in this episode, that you'll be seeing next episode, is coming up with some further construction parts, including another docking port, which I'm going to attach down here at the bottom. But in the meantime, we need to get rid of this engine, so we're going to put Jebediah back inside the station, and then Glafia is just going to uh, push this thing away from the station because we do have our handy-dandy explosives that we're going to put to use. Okay, so put it right there, and let's uh, adjust the settings on this a little bit. Timing's good. 10 meters. It doesn't need to be that big. We're a good ways away from the station, but let's... Let's bring the size down four meters. It's a 2.5 meter part, so four meters should be more than enough. So activate, and let's get the heck out of here. So Glafia back up. It's on a 10 second timer. And whenever you're waiting, 10 seconds always feels like a really long time. There were well over four meters. Any time now. Yeah. <laughs> what do they say? Always end it with a bang, right? So that's going to end this particular episode. So as Glafia makes her way back towards the space station, we'll be drawing this particular episode to a close. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.